All right, so here we are going to talk about half-life. So what is half-life? Half-life is defined as the time it takes the concentration of a reactant to decrease to half of its initial value. So for instance, if I have an initial concentration of, I don't know, 10 molar, and I have a half-life, T1 half, of 60 seconds, then the concentration of A after 60, after 60 seconds is going to be 1 half of 10 molar or 5 molar. So that is just a basic uh, summary of how half-life works. Now it turns out that depending on the order of the reaction, each order of the reaction, uh, whether it's zero, first, second order, whatever, each order is going to have its own unique half-life expression. So let's start with a zero order half-life. So we have zero order half-life. And if we look at what the integrated rate law is, for a zero order reaction, we say that the concentration of A at time t equals minus kt plus the initial concentration of A. And since we're working with half life here, <clears throat> our concentration of A at time t is going to be one half of the initial concentration. So we're going to pl replace this term here, this concentration of A at time t, with the concentration of A initial over 2. Because that's just the definition of half-life. So basically, if we rearrange this equation and solve for t, we'll get an expression for the half-life of a zero-order reaction. So now all we, all we have left to do is just, like I said, algebraically solve for t. So if I subtract both sides of the equation by the initial concentration, uh, we can rewrite this equation as the following. We say that minus kt is equal to the concentration in the initial concentration over 2 minus just the initial concentration. And we don't want minus t, we want just t. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by minus 1. So that means that everything on both sides of the equation is going to get multiplied by negative 1. So that means this is going to turn into a positive, and this is going to turn into a negative, and this negative will turn into a positive. So an equivalent way of saying this is kt is equal to the negative of the initial concentration over 2 plus the initial concentration. So on the right-hand side of the equation, we're subtracting the one-half of the initial concentration from the initial concentration itself. And if we have one of something and we subtract one-half of that same thing, we'll just be left with one-half of whatever it is. So we can rewrite the right-hand side of the equation by saying that kt is equal to simply the initial concentration over 2. So if we divide both sides of this by k, we'll get that t, or t one half, the half life, is equal to the initial concentration over 2k. So now, given any three of these terms, or excuse me, given any two of these terms, we can solve for one unknown. So suppose I know the half life and I know the initial concentration. Well, we can solve for the rate constant if we do that. Also, uh, if I know the initial concentration and I know the rate constant, then we can solve for the half-life. So now let's move on to uh, first order half-life. So 
So now we're going to look up the first order integrated rate law. <clears throat> the first order integrated rate law says that the natural logarithm of the initial concentration, or excuse me, the natural logarithm of the concentration at time t is equal to minus kt plus the natural logarithm of the initial concentration. And once again, we can replace this concentration of A at time t term with the initial concentration over 2. So now we have a natural logarithm of the of one half of the initial concentration on the left hand side of the equation. So now our goal again is to solve for t. So to start with I'm going to subtract both sides of the equation by the natural logarithm of the initial concentration and we'll get that minus kt is equal to the natural logarithm of the initial concentration over 2 minus the natural logarithm of the initial concentration. And when it comes to natural logarithms, or rather any logarithms, logarithms have a general property that says that if I have the ln of a minus the ln of b, that expression is equal to the ln of a divided by b. So we're going to apply that to our equation here. If I have the ln of one half the initial concentration minus the ln of the initial concentration, well, we can rewrite this and just say that the right hand side of the equation is just going to be equal to the natural logarithm of the initial concentration over 2, that whole term, over the initial concentration. Gonna erase that real quick. So, if we take <clears throat> the natural logarithm of the initial concentration over 2 and divide that whole thing by the initial concentration, well, it looks to me like the concentration of uh, the initial concentration terms will cancel and we'll get ln of 1 half. So really what we're left with is minus kt is equal to the natural logarithm of one half. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative one because again we don't want minus t, we want just t. And we'll get that kt is equal to the negative of the natural logarithm of one half. And the, neg the negative of natural logarithm of one half is the same as just the regular positive nat natural logarithm of two. That is another property of, uh, of logarithms. So now we're in a position where we have kt is equal to the natural logarithm of two. Divide by k on both sides and we'll end up getting that the half-life t one half is equal to the natural logarithm of two over k. The natural logarithm of two is I don't know 0 0.693 or something like that so this is also equal to 0 0.693 something 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 over k. And notice that for a first order reaction the expression for the half-life is independent of the concentration, the initial concentration. So that means we don't have to know what the initial concentration is to determine the half-life. That turns out to be very useful when it comes to things like radiometric dating. Alright, so now let's look at second order reaction half-life.
second order. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to refer to the integrated rate law. And in the integrated rate law for a second order reaction, we say that 1 over the concentration of A at time t equals kt plus 1 over the initial concentration. And of course, the concentration of A at time t, since we're dealing with half-life, is going to be 1 half of the initial concentration. So I can say that 1 over the initial concentration over 2, 1 over this whole term, is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. And this looks kind of ugly, so if we're dividing by a denominator of 2, that's the same thing as multiplying by just 2. So I'm going to say that, I'm going to rewrite this left-hand side of the equation, and just say that 2 over the initial concentration of A is equal to the rest of this stuff, kT plus 1 over the initial concentration. This is just a way of rewriting 1 over the initial concentration over 2. So now what we're going to do, again, what we'd like to do is solve for t. So we're going to subtract both sides of the equation by 1 over the initial concentration. And we'll end up getting that kT is equal to 2 over the initial concentration minus 1 over the initial concentration. And since these denominators are both the same, we can subtract the numerators. So if I have 2 of something and I subtract 1 of that same thing, I'll just end up with 1. So 2 over initial concentration minus 1 over initial concentration is simply just going to be 1 over the initial concentration. And lastly, we are going to divide both sides by k, and we'll get that the half-life, t1 half, is equal to 1 over k times the initial concentration. So this is the, uh, half, the expression for half-life for a second order reaction. So what did we do in this video? Well, we started out with the integrated rate law for each order. And then we substituted the concentration of A at time t term by saying that if we're dealing with half-life, the concentration of A at time t is just going to be one half of the initial concentration. And then we just algebraically solve for t. So as long as you know the integrated rate laws, you can figure out the half-life. You don't just have to memorize the expressions.